I mean, it's it's not a very smart thing to yeah. try to steal a Tesla. And We've how many months was it without being charged, basically? A total of not being charged, like five, six months. It was wow. five, six months, no charge. That's crazy. <laughs> We want to thank Road Comforts Floor Mats for supporting this channel. Road Comforts offers the highest quality custom fit Model 3 floor mats on the market. The best part is they're made of a premium and environmentally friendly elastomer that's thick, flexible, and offers large groove channels to catch debris and easily clean off. No PVC based materials or toxic smells. Check out roadcomforts.com and also find them on Amazon listed in the description below. Alright, let's get back to it. Last summer, we made a trip out to Canada, and while there, we rented a Model X from Evoto, a Tesla-only rental company in the Montreal area. Recently, we learned that shortly after our visit, one of Evoto's Teslas, a Model S 75D, was stolen by a renter and went on a harrowing journey around the world inside a shipping container, where it was destined for the Middle East. The co-founder of Evoto shared what has to be one of the most fascinating tales of how a stolen Tesla made its way across the globe, was left fully discharged for months, and eventually defied all odds to surprise both Tesla and the authorities. It was just a regular rental. They emailed, they asked for a rental for like 10 days, and then they wanted to extend it. And they provided all the details, all the information, but they, we found out later that the, the ID used was fake, the, the license was fake, um, even the email was a throwaway email. The phone number was one of those burner cell phones. And so it was hard to get them to track them. Several days into the rental period, Evoto checked on the location of the Model S only to come across a big red flag. And we realized that it was a spot for a few days. So it was and just parked in it was one spot. parked in one spot, you know, okay. with the Tesla GPS. Okay. And that made us like think like, you know, there's something going on here. When we looked up the, the address, it was a kind of like a packing company. Mm -hmm. And then we thought, you know, maybe this person is just, he owns that company or he works at that company. But the next day, um, the, you know, the red circle on your Tesla GPS, it went gray. And that made us think, you know, let's call this person uh -oh. and find out. Mm -hmm. So when we called them and emailed them, there was nothing. Um, right away, we called the police and we told them, you know, we think our car is, has been stolen. When Evoto alerted the authorities of a possible theft in progress, they told them there's nothing they can do for at least seven days. In recent years, Montreal has become a hotbed for what's known as friendly fraud. In this case, renting a car under false pretense for purpose of theft, an act made easier due to minimal repercussions of the crime in the city's massive shipping port. Under the advice of its lawyers, Evoto obtained a warrant to search the last pin location of the Model S. So they issued that and they went into that packing like warehouse and they didn't find the car. So they had just missed it and it was on a ship going somewhere. Following the shipping documents, Evoto uncovered that their Model S was on a ship destined for the Middle East. Cleverly, the thieves had listed the contents of the shipping container as 12 packs of scrap metal. What's inside was actually Evoto's Model S, and also a stolen Nissan Pathfinder from another rental company. It was going to the Middle East via Italy. And so we had to get Interpol involved mm -hmm. to block the car in Italy. Yeah. Because it changes ships there. And so that was a big problem because, you know, the local police does not have access to the Interpol, International Police. So they had to raise it up to RCMP, which is equivalent to FBI. In a process that typically would take various jurisdictions as much as four weeks to collaborate, Evoto, its lawyers, and Tesla were able to work together and seize the car within four days of leaving the Canadian port. When it arrived in Italy, they seized it. They saw that the cars were there and they, they took the container off the ship. So the, the thieves didn't get their cars where they were expecting it, which was somewhere in the Middle East. The other part is the Italian police wanted us to prove that the car was ours, to release it. So they seized it in Italy. Mm -hmm. They're like, okay, this is not these guys' car. It's like Ivoro's car. They seized it in the port. And then they were like, oh, you guys got to prove to us that this car is, is yours. And they only accept a, a judge yeah. court order. So we had to get the paperwork done in Italy to prove that it is our car. So then they had to release it. To so how much car. did you have to spend in legal fees 
for this whole process. It was a lot of money, but it was covered by insurance. Several months and more than $30,000 later, the now fully discharged Model S arrived back in Montreal in the possession of the Canadian border security. So the Canadian border was kind enough to charge the car when it got back. Because you have to understand, it was off. The battery yeah. was off. Well, so nice. they charged it in a, in a 110, like 110, yeah. 220, like a home charger. And so it popped up on my on our apps and we saw that on the app it was charging very slowly and nobody asked this question this is a very important question like what happened to the battery it charged normally it worked normally they were able to drive it like it didn't even need to be towed you so know? you didn't have any battery degradation no, no. over this they whole... called us when it was they, they have to do an inspection just yeah. to check once the inspection was done we went me and the lawyer we picked up the car and i drove it out and then it, it works on the supercharger zero battery degradation zero body damage it was and just how many a, months was it without being charged basically a total of not being charged like five six months it was wow. five six months no charge that's crazy that you had zero battery degradation zero battery degradation fired up just like you know just like like a yeah. new toy like nothing no degradation and no damage it was just a little bit of dust on the car and that was it what have you done differently with your business in order of tracking your vehicles um, since Tesla, you can't track when it's on a boat, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not because that is because the battery's off, right? Yes. So when it's off, like if it's completely disconnected, you cannot track the Tesla. But yeah. we have a we have a second GPS now in all our cars. We ask for uh, two government IDs and we do a background. So we check the the equivalent of the DMV or like the uh, motor vehicle department. Yeah. You know, we check their licenses and we sometimes do a background check with the police. In Montreal and Toronto, 2018 was like a record high car yeah. theft. Tesla was very supportive. Like we talked to them. Yeah. They were willing, like, even if they did get it through the guys, um, the guys that were trying to steal the car, Tesla would have uh, stopped the supercharging wirelessly and they, it wouldn't have been able to supercharge. So, I mean, the guy would have the car. Okay, he's going to charge at home, but he won't yeah. be able to go on road trips and supercharge and, and use the fast chargers. So... I mean, it's, it's not a very smart thing to yeah. try to steal a Tesla, you know? Yeah, it's probably the worst car to yeah. steal because there's so many ways for you to, to get it. Yeah. To get yeah. it. So um, what would you like to tell other people maybe that are thinking of starting a Tesla business, a Tesla rental car company? Yeah, like That's a great question because a Tesla rental is not a normal rental because it's not, it's not like Hertz or Avis or other companies that you're just renting a, a SUV or a sedan or a compact car. It's, it's more of an experience because people they're interested in trying the X or the Model S or the Model 3 you know so it's, it's, it's more like an experience for people that want to go on a road trip or they're doing it for their wedding. It's also a great way if you're new to EVs or to Tesla to kind of like try it on for a try week it, or so exactly, and see if it exactly. fits your lifestyle yeah. and then yeah. before you take that plunge. A lot of guys and they, they reach out to me people have asked us about franchises like yeah. for Evoto you got to know your market and know what the market wants and you got to figure out how you're going to get the cars because i mean a lot of people have their own car and they put it on turo so i think if you have one car i would recommend turo if you have if you're planning to make a business out of it and you want a franchise you can you can email us and we can talk about franchising what is your opinion or your thoughts on tesla having a fleet of cars or, or is that something that you want to do with your cars the robo taxis yes it's very interesting. It's a very interesting idea. Like we look forward to it. Like, you know, um, I believe if we have a large fleet by then when it rolls out, then we will have the largest amount of robo taxis. Cause yeah. I think, I think if I own my, like my personal car, I don't want other people to drive it. Mm -hmm. But if I'm a company that has that big fleet, I wouldn't mind turning on the robo taxis and sending it out to make money for us. Yeah. And then, you know, again, it comes down to the insurance, like whose insurance is going to pay because with us we have corporate insurance but if you have your personal insurance and then you put it on the fleet and someone else crashes it you know your insurance will fight with their insurance like it'll, it'll get messy so i think the trick is the insurance so you have the s the a, the three and the x, x yeah get them in the right order are you gonna get the y yes of course we're uh, we already have like a reservation for the y we put it down so you'll but we have can't decide on the color lineup. we can't decide on the color yet so what do you guys think what color for the y yeah, should he get know. let us know in the comments and if you have any more questions for Sobi or about having a rental car company or you want a franchise make sure you reach out to him um and thank you guys so much for watching 
Uh, we had a few questions for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, go, yeah, for, go it. for it. Go we for it. We wanted to ask you, you know, since we're here and it's the first time we have this interview, you know, Ivoro wanted to ask, you know, like Tesla Kim.